lift up your voice to heaven. Appreciate him the second day. Mshukuru kwa siku ya pili. Oh spiritual week of emphasis. Ya wiki ya msisitizo wa kiroho. Father we thank you. Baba tunakushukuru. Jesus we appreciate you. Yes tunakushukuru. For the grace to wait upon you. Kwa neema ya kufunga mbele zako. Kwa majawabu ya maombi. We return to appreciate you. Tunarejea kukushukuru. My Father we give you praise. Baba utukufu tunakupa sifa. In Jesus mighty name we have given thanks. Katika jina la Yesu tumeshukuru. Now God speak to me once again. Mungu nena nami tena. Send me a word. Nitumie neno. Lift up your voice. Inoa sauti yako. Omba baba. Speak to me. Nena nami. Cause me to hear your voice. Nisababishe nisikie sauti yako. Your word goes on today. Neno lako linapokuja leo. Let there be a specific word on my father. Kuepo na neno maalum kwangu. Katika jina la Yesu Kristo. It is in Jesus might name we have prayed katika jina kule Yesu tumeomba amen amen put your hands together pige bwana yesu makofi as you get seated unapoketi in god's presence katika uwepo wa mungu i take this opportunity again nachukua fursa hii tena to appreciate god kumshukuru mungu and also his servant in the house na pia mtumishi wake katika nyumba hii for granting me the privilege again kwa kunipa upendeleo huu tena bring the word in this second day of spiritual week of emphasis kwa kuleta neno katika siku ya pili ya wiki msisitizo wa kiroho and way of reminder kama kukumbushana our title in this series of teaching somo letu katika mfulizo huu wa masomo operating in the supernatural ni kutenda ama kutembea katika uungu we are taking part 1b tunatazama sehemu ya p ya kwanza b operating in the supernatural kutenda ama kutembea katika uungu part 1b sehemu ya kwanza b yesterday jana we did part 1 tulifanya sehemu ya kwanza and engaging the power of new birth kwa kuhusisha nguvu ya kuzaliwa mara ya pili just as a way of reminder kama kukumbushana our our teaching our caption prophetic focus for this month tamko la kinabi la mwezi huu is operating in the supernatural ni kutenda katika uungu the supernatural is my new realm in redemption uungu ndio kiwango changu kipya katika wokovu is our prophetic focus for the month hilo ndilo tamko la kinabi kwa mwezi huu the supernatural uungu is my new realm ndio kiwango changu kipya in redemption katika wokovu now we are taking a reading tunatazama neno from john chapter 3 verse number 8 ile yohana 3 msarulo wa 8 is the reading of the man ndilo andiko la mwezi huu and we are going to read verse number 8 tutasoma msarulo wa 8 the bible says in verse number 8 biblia inasema msarulo wa 8 the wind blow it where it listed upepo uvuma upendako and thou hearest na sauti yake waisikia the sound thereof but cannot tell when it cometh lakini ujui unakotoka and whether it goeth wala unakokwenda so is everyone that is born of the spirit kadhalika na hali yake kila mtu aliyezaliwa kwa roho now for us to understand the scripture sasa ili tuweze kuelewa andiko we have to begin from verse number 3 lazima tuanze ule mstari wa 3 the bible says biblia inasema and jesus answered and said yesu akajibu akamwambia verily verily i say unto thee amen amen nakwambia except a man is born born again he cannot see the kingdom of god mtu asipozaliwa mara ya pili hawezi kuona ufalme wa mungu yesterday jana we learned that tulijifunza kwamba it is new birth ni kuzaliwa mara ya pili that repositions us to walk in the supernatural kunako tuwezesha sisi kutembea katika uungu and now the scripture we have read sasa andiko tulilosoma except a man is born again mtu asipozaliwa mara ya pili he cannot see the kingdom of god hawezi kuona ufalme wa mungu now verse number 5 sasa msari wa 5 again it is repeated imerudiwa tena and jesus answer yesu akajibu verily verily amen amen i say unto thee ninakwambia except a man is be born of water and spirit mtu asipozaliwa kwa maji na kwa roho he cannot enter into the kingdom of god hawezi kuingia ufalme wa mungu and verse number 6 msari ule wa 6 that which is born of flesh is flesh kilichozaliwa kwa mwili ni mwili that which is born of spirit is spirit na kilichozaliwa na roho ni roho hallelujah hallelujah now we have to understand one thing sasa tunapaswa kuelewa kitu kimoja last night's teaching kupitia mafundisho ya jana new birth kwamba wokovu is what 
repositions a man into the supernatural. Ndiko kana kumfanya mtu kuingia katika uungu. Being born again, kuzaliwa mara ya pili, is not just a religious identity as we had. Si utambulisho tu wa kidini kama tulivyosikia jana. But it is an initiation in the world of, of the spirit. Lakini ni unaingizwa katika ule ulimwengu wa roho. It is an initiation into the supernatural. Unaingizwa katika uungu. What do we understand from the scripture we have read? Tunachoelewa kwenye andiko tulosoma. Number one, cha kwanza, being born again, kuzaliwa mara ya pili, makes one a spirit. Kuna mfanya mtu kuwa roho. To be born again, kuzaliwa mara ya pili, or salvation, au wokovu, makes you a spirit. Kuna kufanya wewe kuwa roho. You have to walk into the understanding. Lazima utembee katika ufahamu. I am not just a physical man, kwamba mimi si mtu wa kimwili, but I am um, I am a spirit lakini kwamba mimi ni roho I am a spirit being mimi ni roho that is the first understanding that we must possess huo ni ufahamu wa kwanza tunapaswa for us to umiliki. operate in the spirit realm ili tuweze kutembea katika viwango vya kiroho number 2 cha pili we have to understand tunapaswa kuelewa being born again kwamba kuzaliwa mara ya pili does not just make you a spirit hakufanyi tu kuwa roho it makes you a spirit in the class of god lakini kuna kufanya kuwa roho ile kwa kwenye daraja la Mungu you are a god God kind of a spirit. Hivyo wewe ni roho kama ya Mungu. You are not just a spirit. Si roho tu. But you are a God kind of a spirit. Lakini wewe ni roho kama ya Mungu. And number 3, na cha 3, with that understanding, kwa ufahamu huo, we have to understand there. Tunapaswa kuelewa kwamba that you are not just a God kind of the spirit. Kwa wewe si roho tu inayotokana na Mungu. Being a spirit, kwa kuwa roho, you can manipulate the outcome of your life from the spirit realm. Unaweza ukaamua matokeo ya maisha yako kupitia ulimwengu wa roho. That's why the Bible says. Ndicho Biblia inachosema. In John chapter 3 verse number 8. Yohana 3 mstari wa 8. Like a wind. Kama upepo. The bloweth uvuma. We cannot see it by our eyes. Hatuwezi kuona kwa macho. But we cannot deny it is effect. Lakini hatuwezi kukana matokeo yake. How? Kwa nini? We can see the effect on the environment. Tunaweza kuona ile matokeo kupitia mazingira. What does it mean to us? ina maana gani that kwetu being born again kwamba kuzaliwa mara ya pili brings you to a place kuna kuingiza mahala brings you to a kind of life kuna kuingiza katika namna ya maisha where you can manipulate the events of life mahala ambako unaweza ukaamua matukio ya maisha you can manipulate the outcome of life unaweza ukaamua matokeo ya maisha you can manipulate the going on in your life unaweza ukaamua mambo yanayoendelea katika maisha yako of unseen kutokea katika ulimwengu au kiwa viwango visivyoonekana but how can you do that unawezaje kufanya hivyo by understanding kwa kuelewa that new birth kwamba wokovu translates you from earthly realm to the spirit realm unakuhamisha kutoka viwango vya duniani kwenda kwenye viwango vya roho new birth wokovu translates you unakuhamisha from earthly to heavenly being kutoka viwango vya kidunia kuwa mtu wa kimbingu you are not just an earthly being wewe si mtu tu wa kawaida wa dunia but you are a heavenly being lakini wewe ni kiumbe wa mbinguni but how can you exercise unawezaje sasa kutendea kazi you are new nature in christ ile asili yako mpya katika kristo yesu by prayer and fasting kwa kufunga na kuomba by engaging the power of prayer and fasting kwa kuhusisha ile nguvu ya kufunga na kuomba what is prayer and fasting nini maana ya kufunga na kuomba number 1 cha kwanza it is abstaining from food in order to gain spiritually ni kuepuka au kujitenga na chakula ili ukue kiroho abstaining from the pleasures of food kujitenga na zile ule uzuri wa chakula in order to build yourself spiritually ili uweze kujijenga kiroho two benefits of prayer and fasting faida mbili za kufunga na kuomba that will enhance your spiritual your, your operation in the spirit realm kwamba itachochea kutembea kwako katika uongo number one, cha kwanza prayer and fasting kufunga na kuomba build the capacity of your spirit man kunajenga ule uwezo wa mtu wako wa ndani kufunga na kuomba build the capacity kunajenga ule uwezo of your spirit man wa mtu wako wa ndani and remember nakumbuka operating in the supernatural kutenda katika uungu is operating in the spirit realm ni kutenda katika viwango vya kiroho the supernatural uungu 
is operated from the spirit realm. Unatendeka katika viwango vya kiroho. When we pray and we fast, hivyo tunapofunga na kuomba, we build the capacity of our spirit man. Tunajenga uwezo wa mtu wetu wa ndani. To operate in the spirit realm. Kutenda katika vile viwango vya kiroho. What do we mean by supernatural? Tuna maana gani tunaposema uungu? Supernatural simply means signs and wonders. Uungu kirahisi kabisa ni ishara na maajabu. Operate in signs and wonders. Kutenda katika ishara na maajabu. How do you operate in signs and wonders? By engaging spiritual laws. Kwa kuhusisha kanuni za kiroho. From the spirit realm. Katika ulimwengu ule wa kiroho. How can you do that? Unawezaje kufanya hivyo? Effectively. Kwa ufanisi. By empowering the capacity of your spirit man. Kwa kuimarisha ule uwezo wa mtu wako ndani. Number 2. Cha pili. Prayer and fasting. Kufunga na kuomba enhances our power and authority. Kuna imarisha mamlaka yetu. Prayer and fasting. Kufunga na kuomba enhances our capacity, enhances, enhances our power and authority. Kuna imarisha nguvu zetu na ile mamlaka katika ulimwengu wa roho. Matthew chapter 17 verse number 21. Mathayo 17:21. The Bible says, Biblia nasema, This can go it not except by prayer and fasting. Namna hii haitoki isipokuwa kwa kufunga na kuomba. When the disciple could not cast out an evil spirit, pale wanafunzi waliposhindwa kutoa roho chafu, they came to Jesus and asked, walimwendea Yesu na kumuuliza, Master, how come we could not command this spirit to go out of the man? Bwana imekuwaaje hatukuweza kuamuru roho ile itoke ndani ya mdugu yule? Jesus answering, Yesu akajibu, he said, akasema, this kind, aina hii, does not go aitoki except by prayer and fasting isipokuwa kwa kufunga what does it tell us anatuambia nini hapa prayer and fasting kufunga na kuomba enhances our authority kunaimarisha mamlaka yetu and to operate in the supernatural na ili utembee katika uungu you must have the ability to command lazima uwe na uwezo wa kuamuru you must have the ability to command things in the spirit realm lazima uwe na uwezo wa kuamuru vitu katika ulimwengu wa roho what i want us to understand is this nataka tuelewe ni kwamba lot of things in this life vitu vingi katika maisha haya answers to the spirit realm vinajibu kutongana na ulimwengu wa roho of the happenings in our lives vitu vingi vinatokea katika maisha yetu can be easily controlled from the spirit realm vinaweza kutawaliwa kupitia ulimwengu wa roho in order to operate and control things from the spirit realm lakini ili uweze kutenda na kutawala vitu katika ulimwengu wa roho be empowered spiritually cha kwanza lazima utiwe nguvu kiroho number 2 cha pili you must have you must have spirit you must have authority lazima uwe na mamlaka you must have an enhanced level of authority lazima uwe na mamlaka ile uwezeshwa when we pray and we fast tunapofunga na kuomba we gain we gain power and authority tunapokea nguvu na mamlaka to operate in the spirit realm ya kutuwezesha kutenda katika ulimwengu wa roho now i want us to understand nataka tuelewe the praying for kingdom kingdom advancement prayer kwamba kuomba maombi ya kusagiza mbele ufalme wa Mungu should be our priority in our prayer and fasting inapaswa kuwa umbele chetu katika kufunga kwetu na kuomba we pray and we fast tunapofunga na kuomba our priority kipa umbele chetu should be praying kingdom advancement prayer tunapaswa kuomba kiwe kuomba maombi ya usogeza mbele ufalme wa Mungu because praying kingdom advancement prayer kwa as a priority in our prayer lives kwa sababu tunapoomba maombi ya usogeza mbele ufalme wa Mungu kama kipa umbele katika maisha yetu commits god kunamfanya Mungu to continue to supernaturally add to us what men are dying to get kuendelea kutuongezea kiungu kile ambacho wengine wanatafuta hata kufa Matthew chapter 6 verse number 9 Matayo 6:9 The Bible say Biblia inasema In this manner you shall pray Mtaomba namna hii Our Father in heaven Baba yetu uliyeko mbinguni Hallowed be thy name Jina lako litukuze Thy kingdom come Ufalme wako uje Your will be done Mapenzi yako yatimize So as you pray for the kingdom Unapoombea ufalme You are enforcing the will of God Unasababisha mapenzi ya Mungu yatimie You are the will of God Unasababisha mapenzi ya Mungu yatimie Commitment to kingdom advancement prayer kujitoa katika maombi ya kusogeza mbele ufalme wa Mungu commit god to continue to reward us supernaturally kunamfanya Mungu ajitoe kutupa thawabu kiungu and openly na wazi wazi kabisa Matthew chapter 6 verse number 6 Matayo 6:6 When thou prayest bali wewe usalipo shut yourself in the room ingia katika chumba chako cha ndani and as you pray secretly na ukisha sali sirini your father who sees 
will reward you openly. Baba yako au na isirini atakupa thawabu wazi wazi. Verse number 17. Sari wa 17. When thou fastest, mfunga hapo. When thou fast, mfunga hapo. Pray the Lord. Bwana asifiwe. As you do so, unapofanya hivyo, your father who sees in secret, baba yako au na isirini, will reward you openly. Atakupa thawabu wazi wazi. Now when you read the scriptures, sasa unaposoma andiko, a scriptural example of a man that was given to pray and fasting. Mfano wa mtu ambaye alijitoa kati ya kufunga na kuomba is apostle Paul. Ni mtume Paulo. When you read this to the life of apostle Paul. Unaposoma maisha ya mtume Paulo. Particularly in 2 Corinthians chapter chapter 2 Corinthians chapter number 20 chapter 11 verse number 27. Wa Korintho wa 2:11:27. 2 Corinthians wa Korintho wa 2 chapter 11:11 verse number 27. Na msari ule wa 27. In weariness katika in painfulness katika taabu na masumbufu katika kukesha katika njaa katika kiu in fastings often katika kufunga mara nyingi not one fasting sio kufunga mara moja fastings often kufunga mara nyingi the same man mtu huyo huyo was given to often fastings alijitoa kati ya kufunga mara nyingi is the same man who commanded the supernatural ndio mtu huyo aliamuru uungu one thing about apostle paul kitu kimoja kuhusiana na mtume paulo he was a man of authority in the spirit realm alikuwa ni mtu mwenye mamlaka katika ulimwengu wa roho that even dim evil spirits knew him katika kiwango ambacho hata roho zilimtambua the accounts of sons of skeva wana wa skeva in acts 19 verse number verse number 14 matendo 19 mstari wa 14 evil spirit confess roho chafu zilikiri paul i know Paulo namjua Jesus I know Yesu namjua But who are thou Lakini ninyi ni akina nani How did they know him Walimjuaje He was a man of authority Kwa sababu alikuwa ni mtu mwenye mamlaka Now authority means Sasa mamlaka maana yake You can command and it happens Unaweza ukaamuru na kitu kikatokea Authority means Mamlaka maana yake You can command and it happens Unaweza ukaamuru na ikatokea Now if a spirit witness of apostle Paul Roho chafu zilimshuhudia mtume Paulo Wakasema Paulo tunamjua Kwa nini He was known by his authority Kwa sababu alitambulika kupitia ile mamlaka yake Katika ulimwengu wa roho Now one thing about operating in the super kitu kimoja kwa habari ya kutenda katika uungu the secret of operating in the supernatural siri ya kutenda katika uungu is discovering that you are a spirit ni wewe kugundua kwamba wewe ni roho you are not a spirit wewe si roho tu but you are a spirit in the class of god lakini ni roho uliyoko kwenye daraja la mungu what is born of god is god kwa sababu kilichozaliwa na mungu ni mungu what is born of spirit is spirit kilichozaliwa na roho ni roho hallelujah hallelujah apostle paul tume paulo in acts chapter number 14 verse number 11 matendo 14 11 it was it was witness ilishuhudiwa kwa after performing signs and wonders baada ya kutenda ishara na miujiza the people of the city said watu wa mji wakasema because have come unto us miungu imetushukia why kwa nini because he was operating in the supernatural kwa sababu alikuwa anatenda katika uungu i want us to understand nataka tuelewe signs and wonder continues to explode in a man's life ishara na miujiza zitaendelea kulipuka katika maisha ya mtu every time he is given kila wakati to a life of fervent prayer and fasting anapojitoa katika maisha ya maombi yenye juhudi na kufunga haleluya haleluya as we do so tunapofanya hivyo signs and wonders will explode in our lives ishara na maajabu zitalipuka katika maisha yetu through our effectual prayer kupitia maombi yetu ya juhudi in the name of jesus katika jina la yesu haleluya haleluya just as is happened in the scriptures kama ambavyo ilitokea kwenye maandiko chapter number 4 Matendo 4 verse number 27 Msari wa 27 There were people praying Kulikuwa na watu wakiomba What were they praying for Walikuwa wanaombea nini They were praying for the supernatural Walikuwa wanaomba ili uungu utokee Verse number 27 the bible says Msari wa 27 Biblia inasema Of truth again the holy child Jesus Thou hast anointed Hallelujah but let's let's open for me verse number 29 Mstari wa 29 verse number 29 Matendo 29 The Bible says Biblia nasema the prayer they were praying Ni ombi walikuwa naomba Now oh Lord Bas sasa bwana Behold their threatening Yaangalie matisho yao And grant unto thy servant Ukawajalie watumwa wako That with boldness Kunena neno lako may speak 
thy word. Verse number 30. The Bible says, after that prayer, in verse number 30, the Bible says, by stretching forth thine hand to heal and sense and wonders may be done by the name of thy holy child, Jesus. Now, verse number 33, the outcome of the prayer, the Bible says, and with great power gave the apostle witness of the resurrection of Jesus and great grace was upon them. Praise the Lord. Every time a church is given for praying for the supernatural, signs and wonders will always result. Hallelujah. Therefore, we should give ourselves to prayer and fasting. And more specifically, throughout this session of Operation 615, let's be on prayer. Let's give ourselves to prayer. As you do so, signs and wonders will never cease in your life. In Jesus' mighty name. I want us to understand one thing. Operating in signs and wonders. If you want your life to become a sign and a wonder, if you want to witness signs and wonders in your life, the key is to be born again. The key is to be born again. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Why to be born again? Being born again kuokoka, initiates you in the world of the spirit. Kuna Being born again kuokoka, puts you far above principalities and power. Kuna kueka juu dhidi ya falme na mamlaka. Why? Kwa nini? Because being born again, kwa sababu kuokoka, you are born again in a new class of spirit. Unaokoka unaingia katika daraja jipya la roho. Yaani roho wa Mungu. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's rise up on our feet. Tusimame kwa miguu yetu. Lift up our voice. Inua sauti yako. And appreciate God for his word. Mshukuru Mungu kwa neno lake. Whatever you are, lift up your voice. Popote uliko inua sauti yako. Appreciate God for his word. Mshukuru Mungu kwa neno lake. Father in the name of Jesus. Baba katika jina la Yesu. Thank you for your word. Asante kwa neno lako. No, thank you for releasing the grace of operating the supernatural. Asante kwa kuachilia neema ya kutembea katika uungu. We give you thanks for my regard. Tunakupa shukrani Mungu mwenye nguvu. In Jesus mighty name. Katika jina kula Yesu. You are in our midst. Uko katikati yetu. You are no born again. Na haujaokoka. One of the greatest miracles. Moja hapo wa muujiza mkubwa. In fact the mother of all miracles. Kimaalum kabisa mama wa muujiza yote. Is being born again. Ni because it repositions you kwa sababu kuna kufanya to a place of commanding all the miracles that you will ever need in this life uwe mahala pa kuamuru muujiza wote unaohitaji katika maisha haya hallelujah hallelujah that's why we are saying in this month ndio maana tunasema mwezi huu the supernatural uungu is my new realm ndio kiwango changu kipya the supernatural uungu is my new realm. Ndio kiwango changu kipya. You are in our midst. Uko katikati yetu. You are not born again. Unajua hujaokoka. I want to pray for you. Chungaje nataka kuombea. For you to experience ili uweze this kind of life. Kupata aina hii ya maisha. Where you can command miracles, signs and wonders in your life. Mahali ambako unaweza ukaamuru ishara, miujiza na maajabu katika maisha yako. Whenever you are not born again. Popote uliko haujaokoka. Lift up your hand. I will pray for you. Inua mkono wako mchungaji atakuombea. You are not born again. Aujaokoka. Lift up your hand. I will pray for you. Inua mkono wako na mchungaji atakuombea. Hallelujah. It seems all of us are born again. Inaonekana wote tumeokoka. Put your hands together. Pigie bwana Yesu makofi. Celebrate the Lord. Sherekee bwana. As to receive God's service. Tunapompokea mtumishi wa Mungu. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's wave our hand to Jesus and give him all the glory. Celebrate him. Father, we thank you for your word this morning, this evening again. Lord, for showing us how we can operate in the supernatural by engaging the power of prayer and fasting. We give you all the glory. We give you all the honor. In Jesus' name. Jesus gloriously. Somebody shout a louder amen. If you are blessed, shout a louder amen. Please be seated. We are going to pray now. We are going to pray. But before we pray, I found out that prayer 
is a mysterious thing. Nimegundua kwamba maombi ni kitu cha ajabu. I will explain. Nitaelezea. Right from the life of Jesus studying about it. About the life of Jesus. Nazungumzia kwa habari ya maisha ya Yesu. They find out that one of the secret of Jesus operating in the supernatural. Tunagundua moja wapo ya siri ile muwezesha Yesu kutenda katika uungu. Was his prayer life. Ilikuwa ni yale maisha yake ya maombi. Even from choosing the disciples. Hata katika kuwachagua mitume. Jesus had to pray. Yesu ilibidi aombe. Before the temptation. Kabla ya majaribu. Jesus had to pray. Yesu alihitaji kuomba. Before he was empowered. Kabla ya kufikwa uweza. He fasted and prayed. Alifunga na kuomba. And in Luke chapter 4 verse 14. Na Luka 4:14. The Bible says he returned with the power of the spirit. Bila sema akarejea kwa nguvu za roho. There anywhere you see miracle. Popote unapoona muujiza there are people praying. Kuna watu wanaomba mahali. There is no man of God no matter how anointed he or she is. Kuna mtumishi wa Mungu ajalisha anampa mafuta kiwango gani. He doesn't spend time in prayers before he would appear before the people. Ambaye hatumii muda kuomba kabla hajatokea mbele za watu. Praise the Lord. Bwana asifiwe. I say praise the Lord. Bwana asifiwe. I'm not hearing a bigger hallelujah. Sikia haleluya kubwa. Shout a bigger hallelujah. Sema haleluya kubwa. Prayer is mysterious. Maombi ni kitu cha siri. Because God is mysterious. Kwa sababu Mungu naye ni wa sirini. I want to really share with you before we pray why prayer is mysterious. Kwa nini maombi ni kitu cha sirini? I will give you three points. Nitakupa sababu tatu. In Revelation chapter 10 verse 7. Ufunuo 17. Our God is a mysterious being. Mungu wetu ni Mungu wa siri. The Bible say But in the days of the voice of the seven angel when shall begin to sound the mystery of god should be finished as he have declared to his servant the prophet ispokuwa ile ufunuo 10 mstari wa 7 asipokuwa katika siku za sauti ya malaika wa saba atakapokuwa tayari kupiga baragumu hapo ndipo siri ya mungu itakapotimizwa god is not a man Mungu si mwanadamu and we cannot know everything about him. Na hatuwezi kujua kila kitu kuhusiana na Mungu. He said the mystery of God. Anasema siri ya Mungu. We will only know everything about God on that day of rapture or when we appear before him. Tutajua kila kitu kuhusiana na Mungu siku ile tutakapotokea mbele zake. So what are the mysteries of prayer? Siri za maombi ni zipi? Connecting it to the, the mysteries of God. Na tukiziunganisha na siri za Mungu. Mysteriously kisiri kabisa it seems that god is limited or restricted inaonekana kwamba mungu yeye huzuiwa to do only what we ask kutenda tu kile tunachoomba it seems that god is limited inaonekana kwamba mungu yeye anaweza akazuiwa god is restricted mungu akazuiwa to do only what we ask na kutenda tu kile ambacho tunaomba it seems that god will only act god will not act until we pray inaonekana kwamba mungu hatotenda mpaka tumeomba that is how mysterious prayer is hivyo ndivyo namna maombi yalivyokuwa ya kisiri that god knows everything we are passing through pasipo kujalisha mungu anajua kila kitu anachopitia this part that god have a plan and purpose for us pasipo kujali mungu ana mpango na makusudi kwetu but what we have known about god kila ambacho tumejua kuhusiana na Mungu so ambacho ni tasiri kabisa na taajabu kwamba Mungu huyu hatendi mpaka tumeomba There was a case in Genesis chapter 20 Kuna swala fulani katika mwanzo 20 Mwanzo 20 mstari wa 3 The case of Abraham and Abimelech The Bible say that God came to Abimelech in the night Bila sema Mungu akaenda kwa Abimelech usiku That was when he took the wife of Abraham. Ni wakati Abimaele alipochukua mke wa Ibrahim. He said to him behold. Na kaambia tazama. That about a dead man. Wewe mtu unayetaka kufa. For the woman that have taken for she is a man's wife. Mwanamke uliyomchukua ni mwanamke wa mtu mwingine. And Abimelech had not come near her. Abimelech alikuwa hajamkaribia. And Abimelech said to God. Abimelech akamwambia Bwana. Lord we that stay also a righteous nation. Bwana je utaangamiza taifa lenye haki? And say he not unto me. Na akamwambia is referring to Abraham now. Ana mwambia Ibrahim sasa. She is my sister. Yeye Ibrahim aliniambia huyu ni dada yake. She herself said. Na hata yeye mwenyewe alisema. She is my brother. Kwamba Ibrahim ni kaka yake. In the integrity of my heart and in innocence of my hand have I done this. Katika uadilifu wa moyo wangu na kwamba sikuwa na hatia nimelitenda jambo hili. God said unto Abimelech in the dream. Na Mungu akamwambia Abimelech katika ndoto. Yeah, I know that thou have 
this in the integrity of the heart. For I also beheld him from sinning against me. Therefore suffered I not thee not to touch her. Sasa usisubutu kumgusa. And in verse 7. That is my emphasis. God told him restore the man his wife. Mungu akamwambia sarudisha mke wa mtu. He is a prophet. Kwa maana yeye ni nabii. And he shall pray for thee. Naye atakuombea. And that shall live. Upate kuishi. And if thou restore. Bali usipomrudisha. This man God have a power to make him live. Mungu ana uwezo kumfanya aishi. You see how mysterious prayer is. Ona namna maombi yako ya ajabu. And God say for you to live. Mungu akamwambia ili wewe uishi. He shall pray. Yeye atakuombea. If he didn't pray. Kama asingeomba I will not act. Mimi sintajibu. If he didn't pray. Kama asingeomba you shall not live. Wewe hautaishi. Your prayer is your life. Maombi yako ndio maisha yako. Ignoring your prayer life is destroying your life. Ukiacha maisha yako ya maombi ni kwamba unaharibu maisha yako. Psalm 2 verse 8. Zaburi 2:8. The Bible said uh, uh, that was in proverb that in the multitude of the people that the king is honored. Katika wingi wa watu ni heshima ya mfalme. The Bible said God loved the word he gave his only son for this for the loss. Mungu aliupenda sana ulimwengu akamtoa mwanae kwa ajili ya watu waliopotea. Akisema hili litokee. Ask of me. Mniombe. And I will give you the heaven. Nami nitawapatia mataifa. For that inheritance. Kwa urithi wenu. If you don't ask me. Msiponiomba. I will not give you souls. Sintawapatia nafsi. Can you put in another translation? Weka kwenye tafsiri nyingine. And I will give you based on your prayer. Nitawapatia kulingana na maombi yenu. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Another translation. Tafsiri nyingine. If you don't ask, usipoomba, God will not give. Mungu hawezi kutoa. Praise the Lord. Bwana asifiwe. There are a lot of things we are lacking because we are not asking. Kuna vitu vingi tunakosa kwa sababu hatuombi. There are a lot of things. Vitu vingi sana. He say only ask. Anasema omba tu. And I will give you the nation as your inheritance. Nitakupatia mataifa kwa urithi wako. Only ask. Omba tu. If you don't ask, usipoomba, you will not receive your healing. Hautapotea upokea uponyaji wako. Praise the Lord. Bwana asifiwe. I say praise the Lord. Bwana asifiwe. That is how mysterious prayer is. Hivyo ndivyo namna maombi yalivyokuwa ya ajabu na yasiri. Anyone that can do without prayer. Yoyote anaweza kuishi pasipo maombi. Is that one that can do without God? Ni yule mtu anaweza kuishi pasipo Mungu. If God must be involved in your life. Kama unataka Mungu usike kwenye maisha yako. Prayer must be present. Maombi lazima yausike. It was John Wesley also who studied God after so many years. John Wesley naye he say it seems God cannot do anything on the earth. Asema inaonekana Mungu hatofanya kitu duniani. Except somebody ask him. Mpaka amepata mtu wa kuomba. And why is he so? Kwa nini na kwa hivyo? Because God does not interfere on the affairs of men. Kwa sababu he only intervenes kwa sababu Mungu haingilii yale masuala ya wanadamu when bali God, tu uingilia kati. When God created the earth. Mungu alipoomba dunia. He handed the earth over to man. Alikabidhi dunia he kwa wanadamu. Have dominion. Akamwambia wanadamu miliki. Which may have authority. Akamwambia kuwa na mamlaka. And God is not someone that will set a committee and do the work of the committee. Na Mungu si mtu atakayeandaa kamati alafu yeye ndo atafanya ile kazi ya kamati. This earth was handed over to us by God. Dunia hii ilikabidhiwa kwetu na Mungu. We are the one that what happened here. Sisi ndio tunaamua nini kinatokea hapa duniani. God to interfere intervene Lakini ili Mungu aingilie kati we must call him Lazima tumuite If we didn't call him Tusipomuita to a prayer he will not intervene Kupitia maombi hata ingilia kati Don't keep quiet and say God knows what I am passing through Usikae kimya kisha ukasema Mungu anajua anachokipitia It is so mysterious Ni ajabu sana na yasiri sana Kwamba hatendi You say all through the Bible Mpaka umeomba Amesema kupitia Biblia God moving when people ask him to move Mungu amekuwa akitembea pale watu akimuomba atembee People of God God seems to be limited Watu wa Mungu Mungu anaweza kuonekana kwamba ame kuwa hana uwezo by our prayer lives kupitia maisha yetu When you see a man operating in the supernatural naturally Ukiona mtu anatembea katika uungu kama kawaida Look at his prayer life Wewe tazama mfumo wako wa maisha God have visited one of his one of his fathers in faith Tumisho Mungu alimtembelea mmoja wapo baba zake katika imani and, and na mke wake akasema Oh thank God you came. Nashukuru Mungu umekuja. You are only one that can make him come out of his prayer room. Wewe tu ndio unaweza kumfanya atoke kwenye chumba chake cha maombi. Kwa siku kadhaa amekuwa kwenye chumba cha Mungu. No Aongee na mtu yeyote. Alikuwa akiomba. He have say you are the only one that we can send something from the say you are one that he will come out. 
Akasema wewe ni mtu pekee tu ambao tunaweza tukamtumia ujumbe na yeye akatoka kusikiliza. When he come in the convention and stand this way. Anapotoka sasa baada ya maombi na kufika kwenye kusanyiko na kusimama hivi. Anatamka kuna mtu hapa. Mungu ameniambia ni kwambie umeponywa. Na utaona ikitokea. Lakini alishatumia siku nyingi katika chumba cha Mungu. Mungu inaonekana kwamba uwezo wake utakuwa una nguvu kupitia mfumo wetu wa maisha. Usicheze na mfumo wako wa maisha. Sema haleluya. Secondly. Cha pili. Mysteriously. Cha ajabu na cha siri. God knows everything. Hata kama Mungu anajua kila kitu. He knows he he knows his own knowing God. Ni Mungu anayejua yote. He knows the things of the past. Anajua mambo ya He knows the things of the present. Anajua mambo ya sasa. He knows of the things of the future. Anajua mambo ya jayo. Even though he knows everything. Hata kama anajua kila kitu. He still wants us to ask what he have already known. Bado anataka tumuombe kile ambacho tayari yeye amekijua. So mysterious. Ni cha ajabu sana hiki. In Matthew chapter 6 verse 8. Marcos, Matayo 6:8. He knows everything. Anajua kila kitu. He still he knows your need. Anajua hitaji lako. He said be not therefore like unto them. For your help your father know it what things that you need of even before you ask. Asema je si kwenu ninyi kwamba baba yenu anatambua kila kitu ninachohitaji kabla ya kuomba. Why he didn't give it to me? Kama Mungu anajua anahitaji hiki na hiki na hiki kwa nini asinipatie? But so mysterious God is. Ni jambo la ajabu namna gani Mungu alivyo. He knows your need even your needs of tomorrow. Anajua hitaji lako hata hitaji lako la kesho. But he still want you to ask. Lakini bado anataka umuombe. Don't joke with your prayer life. Usicheze na maisha yako ya maombi. Bwana asifiwe. And thirdly, na cha tatu, mysteriously. Cha ajabu. God seems to want us to keep asking about the sentence even though we have asked him before. Naonekana Mungu anataka tuendelee kuomba kitu kile kile hata kama tulishaomba huko nyuma. Mysteriously. Cha ajabu kabisa. God seems to want us to keep asking. Inaonekana Mungu anataka tuendelee kuomba about the sentence even though we have asked him before. Kwa habari ya kitu kile kile hata kama tulishaomba huko nyuma. That is in the mystery of one line prayer. Na ini katika siri ya ombi ya neno moja. That Jesus taught us he went seven hours saying the sentence. Yesu alitufundisha kwamba alikwenda akaomba kitu kimoja hicho. Does he mean that God didn't hear the first one? Je, ina maana kwamba Mungu akusikia mara ya kwanza? No God heard. Mungu alisikia. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 verse 17. Wa Thessalonians kwanza 5:17. He said pray without ceasing. Ombeni pasipo kukoma. That is the law. Hiyo ndio sheria. Pray without ceasing. Ombeni pasipo kukoma. And that's why you see most of the prayer points we have been praying we have been praying over and over again. Ndio maana utaona maombi tunayoomba tumekuwa tukiomba mara kwa mara. God wants us to see us in the same thing we have asked before. Mungu anataka tuendelee kuomba kitu kile kile tulichoomba huko nyuma. That is how mysterious prayer is. Ndivyo namna maombi yalivyo ya ajabu. You don't stop until you get a testimony in your hand. Hauachi kuomba mpaka umepata ushuhuda mkononi mwako. Many people don't understand. Watu wengi hawaelewi hili. They say I prayed it in doing the 21 days fasting and prayer. Sema nilishaliombea katika siku 21 za maombi. And any time of prayer they never mention that issue again. Na wakati mwingine wa maombi hawataji hilo hitaji tena. And they have not seen the result of the answer. Na waoni matokeo. God want us to ask that it shows how serious we are. Mungu anataka tuombe. Tunapoomba tena na tena tunaonyesha tunakuwa makini katika ile jambo kwa kiongozi. We call it opportunity in prayer. Tunaita Impunity in prayer. Uendelevu katika maombi. Kuomba kitu kile kile. You know Jesus told a story in Luke chapter 18 verse one. Yesu alituambia story kwenye Luka kumi na nane msaro kwanza. He spoke a parable. Alitupa mfano. And said, Ah, men ought always to pray. Imewa pasta onadam kuomba wakati wote. And not to faint. Walau skate tama. And he started telling a story of a woman. Kanza kutoa mfano wa manamke. It was he just presenting God and His people. Alikuwa na wakilisha mungu na watu wake. This woman came come. Keep coming to this unjust judge. Mwanamke huyu alikuwa anamwendea huyu kazi dhalimu. He could give this unjust judge a beating space. Hakumpa nafasi ya kupumua huyu kazi dhalimu. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And he's telling her, avenge me of my adversary. Akamwambia, nilipe haki upesi. This woman didn't change her prayer points. Mwanamke huyu akubadilisha umbi lake. And this man said, even though he said for a while after war say within himself, see even though I don't fear God and I don't have a regard for anyone. Baada ya muda akasema hata kama mimi si mchi Mungu wala sijali watu. Lakini kwa sababu mwanamke huyu ananiudhi. We have not to obey God with our prayer. Hatujamuudhi Mungu kwa maombi yetu. Praise the Lord. Bwana asifiwe. He said I will avenge her. Nitampatia haki. In other words I will answer her. Kwa maana mengine nitamjibu. Let's by her continue coming. Kwa sababu ya kuendelea kwake kuja. Continues coming. Kuendelea kwake kuja. 
most of us pray once in a week. Watu wengi tunaomba mara moja kwa wiki. No, he said continuous coming when we pray. Asema kuendelea kunijia. And Jesus na compare to our heavenly Father. Yesu akasema ndivyo ilivyo kwa baba yetu wa mbinguni. Verse 6. Verse 6. They say the Lord said, "Hear what the unjust just said." Bwana akasema, "Sikilizeni asema hivyo yule kadhi dhalimu." Shall not God avenge or answer his own elect? Je, Mungu hatawapatia haki au kuwajibu wa teule wake? The cry day and night. Wale waamliliao mchana na usiku. The cry day means pray. Kulia pale manake kuomba. Day and night. Mchana na usiku. Not season. Sio kwa kukoma. I tell you he will avenge his speedily. Na waambieni atawapa haki haraka. But when the son of man shall come. Lakini je, mwana wa Adamu atakapokuja? He find faith on the earth. Ye atakuta imani duniani. It is faith to keep on asking believing yes that the result will come. Ni imani kuendelea kuomba tukiamini kwamba matokeo yatakuja. Rise up on your feet. Simama kwa miguu yako. Any church that prays Kanisa lote linaloomba does not lack signs and wonders. Alikosi ishara na maajabu. We pray in this church. Tunaomba katika kanisa hili. I came to this church I find out this is a church where you start praying for Sunday service on Monday even when you finish the, the previous service. Niligundua kwamba nimekuja hapa nikagundua ni kanisa naloanza kuombea ibada ya Jumapili katika siku ya Jumatatu. Only like what we we experience where we are coming from. Tofauti na huko tulipoona tulipotoka. Who cares to pray for Sunday service? Nani anajali kuombea baada ya Jumapili? We go there religiously. Tunakwenda pale kidini. No desire. We are not even expecting anything. Hakuna thamani hiyo hatutarajii chochote. It's only when someone is sick that most people remember to pray. Ni pale tu mtu anapoumwa watu wengi wanakumbuka kuomba. But I came to this church I saw a church that prays. Nimekuja kwenye kanisa hili nikaona kanisa linaloomba. And since 2015 the team went to another gear. Tango 2015 hii hatua imeingia hatua nyingine. Since the wonder double began it we went to another level. Tangu ajenda Adam na Rufu imeanza tumeingia kwenye kiwango kingine. Praise the Lord. Bwana asifiwe. There are things you are not seeing in your life. Kuna vitu ambavyo uvioni katika maisha yako. Because you are not praying. Kwa sababu auombi. And if we are prayerful. Na kama wewe ni mwana maombi na unaomba. You will join it with fasting. Utaunganisha na kufunga. You join it with fasting. Utaunganisha na kufunga. It begins by being prayerful. Inaanza kwa mtu wa maombi. Because if you are prayerful to subdue the flesh will not be a problem. Kama wewe ni mtu wa maombi ama unaomba sana to walk in the flesh will not be a problem. Kuzuia, na wala kutembea katika mwili utapata shida. Which in her makes you to fast. Ambayo itakupelekea sasa uweze kufunga. Praise the Lord. Bwana asifiwe. I want to read the scripture as we pray. Nataka tusome andiko tunapoomba. In James. Yakobo. Just chapter 4. Yakobo waraka wa Yakobo sura ya 4. Verse 2 and 3. Msari wa 2 na ule wa 3. He say you lost. Mwatamani and have not. Wala hamna kitu. You care and desire to have. Mwaua and cannot attain. Na kuna wivu. He say and you have not. Na hamna kitu because you ask not. Kwa sababu hamuombi. You have not. Amo, amna kitu. Five minutes of, of personal supplication is not enough of what you need this month. Dakika tano za maombi binafsi ya kitoshi kupata kile unachohitaji mwezi huu. Even five minutes is not enough for for thanksgiving in prayer. Dakika tano hata haitoshi kwa shukrani katika maombi. Talk less of presenting your issue and praying in tongues with it. Kupeleka hitaji lako na kunena kwa lugha. He say you have not. Anasema hamna kitu because you ask not. Kwa sababu hamuombi. You have not. Hamna kitu. Praise the Lord. Bwana asifiwe. I say praise the Lord. Bwana asifiwe. There is no growth we will see in this church. Hakuna ukuaji tutakaoona kwenye kanisa hili. Tomorrow that we have not asked today. Kesho kama hatujaomba leo. That is same way. The same way if you ask something today, be hopeful that it will happen tomorrow. Ndio namna ile ile ukiomba kitu leo tarajia kwamba utakipata kesho. I've seen situation when the challenge I say I pray when challenge is come around my say I prayed against it. Nimeona hali that, fulani changamoto inapokuja na nikaumba kinyume na hiyo hali. Na hiyo inanifanya nitulie. People of God your prayer life have to come alive. Watu wa Mungu maisha yako ya maombi yanapaswa kuwa hai. You ask not because 
He said you have not because you ask not. Hapa anasema hamna kitu kwa sababu hamuombi. Is there anything you need in this life that you won't ask? Chochote unachohitaji kwenye maisha yako unahitaji kuomba. In Genesis chapter uh, chapter 1 verse 5. Yakobo 1:5. If any of you lack wisdom. Je kuna mtu amepungukwa na hekima? Let him ask. Naombe. The wisdom you have to ask to get. Hekima unabidi uombe uipate. Everything in this kingdom work by prayer. Kila kitu katika ufalme huu kinatenda kazi kupitia maombi. That is how mysterious prayer is. Hivyo ndivyo namna maombi yalivyoyasiri na ya ajabu. Praise the Lord. Bwana asifiwe. You have you thought you thought that you are praying you are not praying. Unadhani kwamba unaomba lakini oh, hauombi. I have prayed for five, which 5 minutes. Naomba kwa dakika 5. Praise the Lord. Bwana asifiwe. Maybe another there are many people their own prayer life. Kuna watu wengine katika maisha yao maombi. Before they will present any matter to God. Kabla hawajapeleka hitaji kwa Mungu. Maybe on Sunday again. Labda Jumapili. Or next Wednesday. Au Jumatano ijayo. You ask you have not because you ask not. Hauna kitu kwa sababu hauombi. Praise the Lord. Bwana asifiwe. Lift up your voice. Inua sauti yako. I say God. Mwambie Mungu. Baptize me with the spirit of prayer. Nibatize kwa roho ya maombi. Heal me from every prayerlessness. Niponye katika udhaifu wa maombi. Every prayer infirmity. Kila udhaifu wa maombi. You think that you are not praying I'm telling you the reality. Nikwambia ukweli. If your prayer life changes your level of command in the supernatural. Maisha yako ya maombi yakibadilika, uwezo wako wa kuamuru utabadilika. The secret of God's servant is his prayer life. Siri ya mtumishi wa Mungu ni mfumo wake wa maombi. Open your mouth and pray. Fungua kinywa chako na uombe. Open your mouth and pray. Fungua kinywa chako na uombe. Lord help me. Bwana nisaidie. Deliver me from every prayerlessness. Niponye kwenye udhaifu wa maombi. Deliver me to every weakness. Niponye kwenye kila aina ya udhaifu katika maombi. Oh, ya kabralando shaka bralando shia baba bali andele bosha. Ayando beria bala braka teketo. Shuaka taka teketo shaka la braka tokoto liaba. Shuaka la braka teketo koto loboshi ya bala ba. Ayando le bala boshi ya bala bali ya bala bala bo. E bala bala boshi ya katali ya bala bala boshi ya bala ba. Ayando bala boshi ya bala ba. Ayala bala boshi teketo koto koto lobo. E bala boshi kala bala boshi ya bala bala bo leba. Shuaka teketo koto lobo. Ande la bala boshi ya katela bala ba. Ashia katela ya bala bo. E bande li ya bala boshi ya kala bala boshi ya. A bando keto bali ande le bo. E ande le bala boshi ya katoli bala ba. Ashia katela ya bala bala boshi ya bala ba. Ayala bala boshi ya bala bala boshi ya bala ba. Ali ya bala boshi ya bala bala boli ya bala ba. Shua kala e bali ya bala bo. E bala bala boshi kali bando bali ande le bo. Shua katela bala boshi ya bala bala ba. Shua keto keto keto. Shua kala bando le boshi kala bande la bala bo. La bala boshi ya kala bala boshi kala bala ba. Shua keto keto le boshi ya bala bala ba. Ali ya Thank you Jesus. Sante Yesu. Roman chapter 8 verse 26. Warumi 8:26. The spirit also helped our infirmities. Kadhalika roho tusaidia udhaifu wetu. Infirmities is the same word as weakness. Udhaifu ni ile neno kwamba Romans chapter 8 verse 26. He said we don't even know what we should pray as we ought to. Atujui kuomba itupasavyo. May the spirit of God make it intercession for us lakini roho wa mungu utuombea with groanings which cannot be uttered kwa kuugua kusikoweza kutamkika there is a spirit that helps our infirmities kuna roho inayotusaidia udhaifu wetu that's why anytime you pray in the holy ghost you are engaging the holy ghost ndio maana kila wakati unapoomba kwa kunena kwa lugha unamhusisha roho mtakatifu i've never seen anyone who operate in the supernatural without prayer sijae kuona mtu yote anaweza kutenda katika huku pasipo maombi kimaalum kabisa kuomba katika roho mtakatifu many story what god servants enjoying today the foundation was laid in prayer kitu and still praying praying up to today kitu ambacho mtumishi wa mungu anakifurahia leo katika huduma yake msingi ameujenga kwenye maombi na anaendelea kuomba mpaka leo today he say a word even the government will be shivering leo anasema neno hata serikali inatekisika because one day he went to pray in the mountain. Kwa sababu siku moja alikwenda kuomba mlimani. Couple with fasting. Akiwa ambatanisha na kufunga. And he said that he read the, spirit, uh, the, the book of Ezekiel was his we anchor scripture. Anasema andiko lake nanga lilikuwa kitabu kile cha Ezekiel. He was coming down. Na wakati anashuka. God said my son David. Mungu akamwambia mwanangu Daudi. Touch your mouth as a code of fire. Nimegusa kinywa chako na kala moto. Kuanzia leo. If you say it you will see it. Ukisema jambo utaliona. That's why he declared something in Kenya land. Ndio maana alitamka kitu Kenya land. Somebody in America will be healed. Na mtu kule Marekani anaponya. Somebody in Botswana will be healed. Mtu Botswana anaponya. Somebody in Tanzania will be healed. Mtu Tanzania anaponya. It was prayer. 
ilikuwa ni kupitia maombi they asked smith we go swa how often do you pray how, how do you pray he say about his prayer life walimuuliza smith we go swa kwa habari ya mfumo wake wa maombi more than 20 minutes asma siombi zaidi ya dakika 20 and also i don't stay up to 20 minutes without praying na pia siwezi kukaa dakika 20 pasipo kuomba prayer was his way of life Maombi yalikuwa ni namna yake ya kuishi. Anasema siwezi kukaa dakika 20 pasipo kuomba. Paka leo ananena. Watu wa Mungu maisha yako ya maombi yakiimarishwa. Unaweza ukaamuru uungu unapotaka. Hata unaweza ukaomba kwa kunena kwa lugha na ugonjwa ukapotea pasipo kujua. Bwana asifiwe. You know the flies Unajua nzi flies does not nzi page on the pot of soup on the fire nzi hawawezi kusogea katika tuseme birika ama sufuria yenye moto because it will destroy them kwa sababu itamwaribu but the same pot of soup lakini sufuria hiyo ya supu when it is cold inapokuwa imepoa flies will be organizing themselves there nzi watajipanga na kukaa pale is like into your life hii inafananishwa na maisha yako. Maisha yako yanapokuwa ya moto. Hata magonjwa yanaruka yanapita zake. Mishale inaruka na kuondoka. Shetani anasema msisogee karibu na mtu huyu. Lakini maisha yako yanapokuwa yamepoa. Utaona mashambulizi pande zote. Fanya maisha yako yawe na moto. Fanya maisha yako yawe na moto. Kupitia jukwaa la maombi. Utatazama nyuma utakumbuka ugonjwa wa mwisho ni lini ulikupata. Sema haleluya kubwa. Somebody bless shout a big hallelujah. Sema haleluya kubwa. Stretch forth your hand now and pray. Elekeza mkono wako kwenye ushirika mtakatifu na Mungu. Moja wapo ya sababu tunakuambia uombe hata kwenye ushirika. Usiseme Mungu anajua anachopitia. Kama unahitaji uponyaji kwenye ushirika omba. Kama unahitaji nira ya redio unaomba. Omba chochote unachotamani kwenye ushirika mtakatifu. Anza kuomba sasa. Omba omba omba. Ala katu shabalandelea katalaba. The communion table have virtues that can make you live a sickness free life. Ushirika mtakatifu una nguvu inaweza kufanya uishi pasipo magonjwa. Nguvu inaweza kuharibu mishale yote ya shetani. What do you desire? Lakini unatamani nini sasa? Kama unachotamani na Mungu atafikisha. Ayo brelando kalabra ya bakato ketusha kalaba. Ayando brelia katusha brelando breliando kalabo. Andeliande kabalando beliando beliaba shuaka blakato belando belando balande ketosia shuaki ando belando beliando kala balaba asho belande kabaka bali keto open your mouth anything desire God will do it for you God will do it for you we are this communion table every weakness in your body every prayerlessness in your body that spirit of prayerlessness is killed now. Every prayer infirmity, every sickness is healed now. Is healed now. By this communion, the spirit of prayer at work in the life of Jesus. Receive it now as you partake of this communion. Prayer will be like Britain. Prayer will be like Britain. Prayer will be like Britain. Shakabala ba 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 liya ba. Shuketo kia talanda la ba ba. Ashaka cheketo koto lobo. Ebrando baliande katu shalaba. Aliande keto Thank you, Jesus. As your people have prayed today, let it be delivered to them as they partake of this communion. I bless it and I call it the flesh and the blood of Jesus Christ. I decree. Every one of prayerlessness today. Every one of prayer infirmity. Lord, by this communion, we receive afresh the spirit of grace and supplication. By this communion today. Prayer will be like breathing for us. I pledge this communion and everyone in all our centers. The same effect of this communion here. Matokeo yanatekeka huko kwenye vituo unavyotazama. In the name of Jesus Christ. Kwa ya tuimbe. Damu
ya Yesu usafisha kabisa damu Thank to Jesus. Father, thank you. Give God thanks in the spirit. He that give it thanks in the spirit, give it thanks. Well. Give him thanks in the spirit now. Give him thanks in the spirit. I believe God that your prayer life. Oh, it's on fire already. It's on fire already. It's on fire already. Oh, you will see a lot of things that will happen in your life. A lot of desires as you pray them in. Oh, they are coming to pass in your life. Oh, shaka bali bala bali bala bala. Thank you, Jesus. Asante Jesus. Somebody bless today. Shout me louder. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Kuba. Go and pray. Nenda ukaombe. As a commission, we are not wasting time coming every morning, every evening praying. Kama huduma atupotezimda kuja swi na jioni kuomba. I don't know how many churches in the world are doing what you are doing today. Sijui ni makanisa mangapi duniani wanafanya hiki tunachokifanya. I can't tell. Siwezi kueleza. But you will see the difference within a short time. Lakini utaona tofauti ndani ya muda mfupi. We are not wasting every morning we pray for team prayers. Atupoteze muda. Even we pray for team prayers. Kila asubuhi tunaomba maombi 10 na jioni maombi 10 na nne. Na tunafanya ndani ya siku 52. Tunafanya ndani ya siku 52. We are not talking about other prayers individually and doing as the staff are doing another all. Hatuzungumzi maombi mengine ya kibinafsi na ya watenda kazi. And you think that we are joking? Na unadhani tunatania? Please learn it and do it for your own life. Tafadhali jifunze maombi na ufanye katika maisha yako binafsi. Live a prayerful life. Ishi maisha ya maombi. And you see you you will look around you will see ah all those challenges I used to face they don't come again. Na utatazama utakuja kugundua kwamba changamoto zote zilikuwa zikikwambatana na wewe hazipo tena. Somebody shout hallelujah. Sema hallelujah. You are blessed. Umebarikiwa. Go in peace. Nenda kwa amani. Your prayer life will not go down. Maisha yako ya maombi hatashuka tena. And as you pray. Na unapoomba. You shall get a result in Utapata matokeo. In the name of Jesus Christ. Katika jina la Yesu Kristo. Everything attacking your prayer life. Kila kitu kinachoshambulia maisha yako ya maombi. Today such thing is attacking the name of Jesus. Leo kinashambuliwa. The devil is one enemy 
attacking your prayer life. Shetani ndiye adui mmoja wapo anayeshambulia maisha yako maombi. Don't give place to the devil. Tafadhali usimpe nafasi ibilisi. Don't give a place to the devil. Usimpe nafasi ibilisi. Many people can stand talking with another person for one hour. Watu wengine wanaweza kusimama kumuongelea mtu lisali moja. Maybe gossiping or saying the things that will not have value to their life. Labda kuongea vitu umbea au vitu ambavyo vitaongeza thamani katika maisha yao. Leg will not pend them. Miguu haitawauma. But immediately they pray five minutes their leg is pending. Lakini wakianza kuomba dakika tano miguu ishaanza kuuma. Many people can watch television for five hours. Watu wengine wanaanza kutazama TV kwa masaa matano pasipo kupumzika. But before they, they they carry the bible or pray for two minutes they have started sleeping. Wakishika Biblia na kuomba dakika mbili washaanza kulala. When you see such thing in your life know that is a hand work of the devil. Unapoona mambo kama hayo kwenye maisha yako jua huo ni mkono wa ibilisi. The devil and he will flee from you. Keme shetani naye atakukimbia. Somebody shout hallelujah. Sema hallelujah. The devil does not want you to pray. Shetani hataki wewe uombe. Your prayer can handle the devil. Maombi yako yanaweza kumtisha shetani. And he will bring a lot of distractions. Na ndio maana ataleta vizuizi vingi. For you not to pray. Ili wewe usiweze kuomba. Please don't give a place to the devil. Tafadhali usimpe ibilisi nafasi. Any nafasi. place you give to the devil is what it will occupy. Nafasi yote unayompa ibilisi ndio atakayotumia. Praise the Lord. Bwana asifiwe. You are blessed. Umebarikiwa. I cover you with the blood of Na Jesus. Nakufunika kwa damu ya Yesu. No anyone attacking and any forces of darkness attacking your prayer life. Anayekushambulia yeyote au nguvu za kiza anazo kushambulia. Leo zimekoma kwa jina la Yesu. I will hear your testimony this weekend. Nitasikia ushuhuda wako weekend hii. Jesus glorious. Katika jina